actually be first of the workshop series. Um, what the workshop series is going to be is be the videos I produce that when I'm doing something, any kind of maintenance, upgrade, repair, that kind of thing on one of these printers. Something that's worth sharing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a video of it, share that. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is, is something that you'll probably have to do uh, at some point in uh, your 3D printing career. We're going to replace the LCD screen on the EPAX 3D X1. This one, uh, it, it's only about well, two months old or so. It's broken due to an operator error. We'll go over exactly what happened and why it happened so you can try to avoid it. Um, it's a fairly common mistake. Uh, they do have to be replaced, though, due to wear. They, they wear out. It's considered consumable. Um, how long they last depends a lot on the individual printer and uh, I guess kind of luck of the draw also. You know, uh, your individual uh, LCD was coming out of the factory and all that fun stuff, but you know, if you're printing a lot, it's something you may have to replace, uh, you know, every year or so, uh, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less frequently. It's not too difficult to do, um, like I said, we're doing it on the EPEX today, but it's a very similar procedure uh, on other printers as well. Um, most of the basics are pretty much the same. So first we're going to go over what happened and why I need to replace it. Uh, if I pop this thing open here, you can see. LCD screen. Um, what happened is uh, some resin dripped between the FEP film and the LCD screen. And you can see on there, if you look at it kind of an angle, you can see it kind of cured on there. And what, it, what had happened is uh, I didn't notice it, didn't recognize that it happened. Uh, when I went to take the, the, uh, the vat off after a print, I pulled on it and instead of the vat itself just coming out, the vat came out with the LCD screen. Uh, you'd be amazed, it, it's not a very, uh, it's not held in there by much, so uh, it, it, it's, it didn't take much for it to, to break. It, I didn't even realize what was happening at the time. Uh, it didn't take all that much for us to, to rip it right out of there. That's one thing I, I, I kind of don't like about some of these printers that have the, the screws in this configuration with the, these little L-shaped brackets. Is you don't have any room to lift up at all. It's only pulling this way. And I suppose that that's a little bit better in that, you know, your force is going to be more in this direction, uh, which is going to tend to maybe not rip the screen off as much. But I've found in the past that some of them, like the Zortrax, have the, the screws go down and you can lift completely up on that. If you realize your, your bed's stuck, you can kind of lift and twist at the same time and it comes uh, comes right off. But yeah, it's a minor, minor issue. Um, basically, it comes down to paying attention to it um, and just being absolutely positive that that, that bed isn't stuck to the LCD screen for a bit. Good news is on the um, the EPAX photon symbol units like that, the replacement's thirty or forty dollars, so it's not not really really expensive. Some of the other ones like the Zortrax, uh, you're looking like 160, 170 dollars just for the screen, so it can get a little pricey. Uh, first thing we're gonna want to do is we gotta obviously machine's uh, unplugged if we're working on it. Um, we gotta go ahead and open it up. Just take two millimeter X key. This is going to give us access to the internal electronics board so we can unplug it.
those two. <clears throat> All right. So once we're in here, what we're going to be doing is disconnecting the uh, LCD screen, which is over here on this side. So a ribbon cable and some separated. Uh, that's actually what was separated. It wasn't actually the um, the uh, the screen didn't break itself, it was just the cable. I'll show you in the other direction here what we're looking at. So you see our LCD screen cable in there where it connects to the board right here. We're going to just go ahead and remove that. It's, it's taped in place to help keep it on there for shipping and all that. So we just go ahead and remove that piece of white sticky tape along with that screen. Alright, so now turn the unit back up. Turn the side up again. And I'm going to go ahead and get everything cleaned up in there nicely just so uh, uh, there's a little bit of material on the screen there. So I'm going to get in there. Okay. It's on the glass sheet covering that, that LED is down there. There's also a little bit of residue. Um, the screen's held on with double stick tape. A little bit of tape residue on there as well. I don't want to just absolutely flood this area with alcohol because it'll be stripped through. But leave the lamp there. Get that tape residue off. Good and clean. Get that glass litter wipe down there just to make sure we got it clean. Alright, looks good. Our screen comes from your packs pretty much ready to install. Whole thing's one unit with the tempered glass is already ready to go. So you don't have to assemble it or anything. Just be a matter of putting it on. Putting it in place, taping it down, removing the protective screen, and plugging it in. So we'll go ahead and feed the rubbing cable through. little pieces of uh, non-stick tape, or, excuse me, double stick tape. It's a fairly strong tape I've got. More industrial types, permanent adhesive. I'm going to work with this with my gloves on. Find out. Yeah, we're gonna lose the gloves here. Down there on the 
Jesus. All right, it's just a matter of putting the screen in place, press it down in the recess. Cable. There's plenty of excess here. It's not a matter of getting it lined up. Press it in place. In there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some of this capped on tape on it to hold it in place. Popping off. All right. Wow. We could stop at that, but I'm going to do one more quick step here. I've seen this done by a few people. And I want to just see if it may help prevent this problem from happening again. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the protective cover. What I've seen people do in the past that seemed to really uh, improve that, that hold on there considerably is they've uh, used this kept on tape around the edge as well on the top. It's a real thin film, so it's not going to affect your, your Z height or anything, but uh, it's going to give a little more holding power and also close that off so if I do spill resin on it again, it won't uh, be able to drip down into the enclosure. Which I can see it being a, a great advantage. First, I mess that piece up. Try that. It's good where it's not overlapping the area that needs to be exposed or maybe like it through obviously. And this is, you know, this isn't anything that's in the manual or a required step or, but I, I've seen it done several times and it just makes sense. Close that off.
prevent. Hopefully prevent that from happening again. Give me you know, secure this a little better, but also if I do get resin spilled on there, prevent it from dripping down into the inside of the printer. This tape you can pick up on Amazon easily. It's about eight dollars a roll, so cheap insurance. About cheap enough. New after new uh, LCD. All right, well, that's on there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put the bottom back on, then we'll turn it on, fire it up, see how the LCD screen works. All right, so the replacement LCD screen's on. We go ahead. Turn the power on, see what happens. Turn the exposure down here. Test. seconds so we definitely don't need that much time to know if the screen's working or not. Twenty seconds. And there we go. We now have a functional screen again. It's a good thing. And if you would like to see more of these videos make sure you subscribe to this channel. I'll be doing this on other machines and on uh, other other maintenance procedures, uh, upgrades, repairs, all that fun stuff. So whenever I have a project that I'm going to be working on, I will go ahead and do a video like this on it and uh, post those on here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.